So I just came outside to get my packages. I think I might have done a little bit too much online shopping. Should I bring them inside and show you what I got? I think I should. Okay, so I know right now it looks like I have a really bad online shopping addiction, but I promise you that's not it. So as some of you know, I think I have an Etsy shop online where I sell vintage stuff. I also sell like on Depop, but where I get a lot of my stuff is estate sales. And then I also get quite a few things on online auction sites. So usually I'll get like maybe one package a day or every other day, but I never get this many in one day. I don't know about you guys, but I like when people do like PR unboxing. This is not that, but it's still an unboxing. So I thought I would show you guys what type of stuff I buy online to resell. Okay, let's go. We'll start with this little baby one. I really try not to shop from like actual shops, but like if there's something I see I like that's like at a shop, I'll usually go to like Macari or Poshmark or Depop and see if somebody's selling it second hand. My mom's birthday is coming up. So I actually got this. It's just a candle for my mom, a Bath and Body Works candle. And I got it on Macari and I actually got it cheaper than what they sell in the store for. It's a pumpkin pecan waffles candle and see, it's never even been lit. I think in store they sell them for, oh, 25, the stickers on there. And I got it for, I think like 12 or 13. So little secret tip, if there's something you want in the store, go to Depop, go to Macari, go to Poshmark. And most likely somebody is selling the exact same thing for way cheaper. And it's probably never even been worn or used. Okay, let's see. I can't remember what's in most of these. I mean, I have like a vague idea. I'm going to say a lot of them are probably shoes. So these are a pair of Doc Martens. If you're on my Etsy shop or my Depop, you'll notice I really have a thing for Doc Martens. I especially like to get vintage Doc Martens. They were just made a lot better. They were made with like actual leather. They were made in England. This is a pair of Doc Martin boots. These are probably like early 2000s. They have a cute little flower on the side there. I've actually been getting this exact same style in a lot. I have it in like a high top like this. And then I also have them in like a short shoe. I'll have my Depop and my Etsy linked below. Cute. So these are another pair of Doc Martens and look at these. These like haven't even been worn. You can see the inside. The soles are super clean. These are from like the late 90s. They're kind of like a dark blue. They almost look black. Next, guess what we have another pair of Doc Martens. I wasn't lying when I told you. I get a lot of Doc Martens, vintage Doc Martens. So these are cute. They're kind of like a blue gray and they have like a little cut out, almost like a flower detail. Again, these are super well taken care of. See how you can see the brand in the inside. That means they've like hardly ever been worn. Again, they're super clean on the bottom. These are also from like the late nineties. And it's like some people just, you know, bought some shoes a long time ago and they never wore them. And so I am finding them and bringing them to you guys. So another pair of vintage Doc Martens. Again, they look like they've hardly been worn. You can see the name and the logo in the inside. These are like a Mary Jane style. And most of these are, those ones were size fives and these are a size four, which if you don't know, so vintage Doc Martens are in a UK size. So usually whatever the UK size is, you wanna go up two sizes from that and that's the US size. So like these are labeled a UK size four. So a American or US sizes, they would be a women's size six. Or for the men's, they only go up one size, so they would be a men's size five, which is a little tip that you can always use to figure out like the conversion rate or whatever you wanna call it. So like, I'm usually a seven and a half in a US size, but for the vintage docks, I usually wear a size five, because as you know, docks are usually a little bit bigger than whatever their size is. So usually I'm a seven and a half and I wear a vintage dock UK size five, which translates to like a seven, seven and a half. Yeah, just a little tip, whatever the UK size is, the US is always two sizes up from that. Although I think new Doc Martens, ones that aren't vintage, they have the US and the UK size. Guess what, we have another Doc Martens. So these are not quite as old. These are probably like early 2000s 
but still really cute. I love the chunky sole, right? Just like a nice brown, chunky dog. Again, they're super clean, well taken care of. They have like no scratches, no scuffs. I think these are something different or at least a different brand. Oh yeah, we have a different brand. These are Harley Davidson, which if you're ever looking for a good leather boot vintage, Harley Davidson has some really good options. These aren't vintage, these are new, but they were still a really good deal. Just like a little short boot. These aren't really my style. These were just like a really good deal and they came in the box. Anything that comes in the original box just seemed to sell a little bit faster. So these are again in really good condition. They look like they really haven't been worn. All right, the last one. Any guesses? Well, let's see, they've all been shoes except one little candle. So these are again Doc Martens. These are a really tall black leather boot. They look really big. Oh, they're a size seven. So they're a size nine, nine and a half in US women's. And they're really soft. Again, they've hardly been worn. I like tall boots. I don't like boots quite this tall. I have a pair of Docs. They're the Leona style. That's like my favorite pair of Doc Martens that I own. I love those. So that's all of them. Hopefully that wasn't too boring. So usually what I do, I get a few different packages throughout the week. And then once I feel like I have a good like pile of stuff built up, then I'll take photos of it and work on posting it. Then I'll just like get it all done in like a few hours, you know? But I thought I would show you guys kind of like my process for that. I have a closet behind you, which is where I store kind of all of my vintage stuff or all the stuff I'm going to sell. I'll show you guys my whole process real quick, like where I store them and I have quite a bit of shoes built up, so I need to take some photos. So I'll show you how that all works real quick. So this is the boxes I just undid for all these shoes. But one thing I am very proud of is that I will reuse all of these boxes and I'll show you, I actually have a little storage unit or a storage closet through here. And this is where I keep all of my boxes. See, this is just full of boxes. So I'll use these to ship all my orders because we have to help save the environment. Every little bit counts. And then I actually have this curtain up here and I just undo it. And then this is where I'll take my photos because I don't really have like a blank white wall. So it just kind of gets tucked over to the side when I'm not using it. And then I'll just undo it. And then I have like a white place to take all my photos. I'll also set like two of these lights up on the side while I take my photos so they're like nice and bright. So this is where I was sitting filming. And then right over here is where I store a bunch of my stuff. I also have this rack over here where I'll, I'll store things that I'm like currently selling, but I also want to wear like, I love this print. I also got this. This is from JCPenney, look at that. But yeah, like things I'm currently wearing and selling, I'll put those up here. And then over here is where I keep a majority of my stuff. I put all my hanging stuff over here, all the clothes I'm selling. And then like all my packing supplies are down there. And then this is where I pile up all my shoes that I've gotten in recently that I haven't taken photos of yet. And then these are the bins where I store a lot of the shoes. These are basically all shoes. See, just more shoes. And then over here is where I have like fragile things that I'm selling. Basically, this is just a closet full of stuff I am selling. Then I also have like this built in here and and most of these are also filled with, as you can see, shoes. It is full to the brim. So these also hold shoes and pants. And then I have one other spot. So we go into my bedroom and I have this closet here. And the shelf up here is all shoes and clothes that I am selling. So before I take photos of the shoes, I like to polish them up and I have this box that has like every color shoe polish. And I just like to polish them up before I take photos because some of them have been sitting in people's closets for like years and they just look kind of dusty and yucky and I want them to look their best in the photos. So I think I have like 15 pairs of shoes I need to polish, so. Let's do that real quick before we take photos. So first I just go around all these little edges with just like a wet washcloth because a lot of dust likes to collect along them. And yes, I do do this on every single shoe. Gotta have them looking their best for their photos. 
so after they each get, I guess you could call it a rim job. I mean, that's kind of what it is. Next is a little shoe polish. Some of the shoes do come looking beat up as hell, and it's always surprising what just a little bit of TLC can do to them. Like seriously, some of them will look like a totally new shoe. And all I've really done is add some polish and maybe a little bit of wax. But honestly, most of the shoes don't require too much. Some of them might have like a spot or two. So now that they're all nice and shiny, let's go take some photos. So once I'm done polishing all the shoes, I like having them kind of like in an arm's reach when I'm taking photos of them. So I'll just move them all over next to the white curtain. Then I have two of these lights that I set up that I showed you earlier, a little ottoman, and then I put this bubble wrap roll on it to make it a little taller. And I finish it off with a piece of glass on the top. And then I pull down the white curtain. It really doesn't take much to make like a nice little photo setup. And then next, I just take photos of the shoes, you know, kind of like one at a time. Gotta smooth out any of the wrinkles so there'll be less editing to do afterwards. Then I have like basically the same 10 angles that I use for each pair when taking photos. Basically, it's like the left and the right sides, and then I have the left and the right, kind of like a side angle. The front and the back. The heel. The label and the sizing the inside of the shoes, and then the soles. Then once I feel like I've got all of my shots, I just do the same thing with the next pair. I do this so often, I've got it down to about like four or five minutes per pair of shoes, which really isn't that much, but sometimes I have like 25 or 30 pairs of shoes to do in one sitting, so it can take a little bit. So 15 shoes later and I have finally taken all of the photos. It takes a good few hours. I also put everything away. It just bothers me if that's all sitting there. It makes my room feel really cluttered and I hate it. So the next thing I have to do is edit the photos and it's pretty easy. I made this preset in Lightroom that goes perfect with that white background I had. So all I have to do is just pop the photos in to Lightroom, apply this preset, and then export them. I do have to measure the shoes, but I do it so often that it's pretty easy. So I'll show you guys how I do this real quick. So I'm not going to show you how I edit my photos here, but if you're interested in that, maybe like leave me a comment and that's something I could do like a whole separate video on. So once all the photos are edited, then I list each item on Depop with like all of its measurements, size, prices, etc. Then I'll copy the description from Depop and then I'll go to Etsy where I'll create the exact same listing for the same pair of shoes. Then I'll pick all the edited photos I wanna use for the listing. Here you can see the unedited photos that I took before and how much brighter the edited photos are. It really makes a difference. Then I'll rearrange the photos on Etsy how I want, update the shipping weight, size of the shoes, color, price, etc. Then I'll just keep repeating this process until each pair of shoes has been listed as a draft. So while I was filming this video today, I actually got an order on my Etsy shop for a pair of Doc Martens, of course. So I thought it would be kind of fitting if I showed you real quick how I wrap them up and then how I ship them. And I do have a few tricks if you ship stuff that you may not know about that will save you some money. So I have a bunch of this craft paper that I save. I actually get this in orders through the mail. Like today I got some in a box and I'll just save it and then I'll wrap any of my orders up in it. I think it's just good for like, you know, reusing something and I like the way it looks. So it works out well. So first I'm just gonna make sure I have a big enough piece. I think, yeah, I'm gonna go like this and just cut it in the middle so then I can use the other half later. And then I like to fold the ends in on each side so it just has like a really finished look. And then just stick them in the middle. I usually try and have some tape ready. This is like my box that has like all my shipping stuff. I use masking tape because I kind of like the way it looks and it's really cheap. This is too much paper but we'll make it work. And then I just fold these in like a present, basically. 
and do the other side the same way. And then once it's all wrapped up like this, I always take some stirring. I get this at like Hobby Lobby or Marshalls and I'm just gonna do a nice little bow on it. And then I have a box of these like name tags, like this one I'll put a white one on. And then I have a stamp that goes on the front. And then I'll write thank you on the front and I'll just like a little note on the back, just like thanks for supporting my shop. I think people always like handwritten notes. People always comment that in my reviews. They're like, oh, they included a handwritten note. And then I'll just tie this on here. It looks good, right? It's like simple, but it's better than just putting them in there without wrapping them in anything. Okay, now when it comes to shipping anything, there is a little secret that I recently discovered. Basically, you'd probably think, oh, just put it in a box, like a box you have at home. Well, anything in a box that weighs over a pound is going to cost more than if you put it in an envelope. If you use these ones, you can get them from the post office. These don't cost anything. They're free and you can do whatever weight, whatever size. These ones are good too. They're bubble wrap, but this is a flat rate and it will always be the same price. So anything you put in an envelope, if it's over a pound, is usually a couple dollars cheaper than if you put it in a box. I know it's really weird, it's really crazy, but that's just the way it is. So I always put things in an envelope. So I just wanna pause here real quick. So I'm about to say envelope and bag a lot. Basically, they mean the same thing. If I say envelope, I also mean bag, or if I say bag, I also mean envelope. Okay, got it? All right, moving on. I hardly ever use boxes anymore unless it's something fragile. Or if you put it in a box, you can even put it in an envelope and then it's still considered in an envelope and then it will still be cheaper. It's really crazy. You should start noticing in the mail, sometimes I'll get like packages and it's a box and they put it in a bag because they've learned anything in a bag is cheaper than being in a box. And you can use any bag. I have a bunch of bags like these, you know, like you can use any size bag you want. But these ones are good because they're free from the post office. But if you need to use bigger sizes, like I have these really big ones. And sometimes if I have a big box and I put it in here, it will seriously be like $5 cheaper just by putting it in a bag. I also recommend using, I use Pirate Ship. If you have to ship a lot of things, Pirate Ship will usually give you some type of discount. But if you don't, you can still just go to the post office and really anything in a bag will always be cheaper to ship than in a box. I always try to use the smallest possible, so if it'll fit in here, oh perfect. Nice and snug. And then all I have to do is print off a label, which I do from home, and it's ready to be shipped. Okay, I got my label on. It is ready to go to the post office. It is almost three in the morning and I'm gonna go drop it off just because tomorrow's Saturday and I wanna get it in the mail for the weekend so they can get it sooner. And I'm craving a treat. I haven't really had anything sweet today, so let's go get a treat. Put these on. I actually found these in the garbage when I lived in New York.
these are really good too. Definitely recommend those. I like all the stuff that's bad for you. This sounds good. Should I try this? Okay, there's no way I'm making it home without eating something. Thinking popcorn. I don't have any place my phone will stay, so. Okay, let's go home. I'm going to the pumpkin patch tomorrow with my family. But I have to get up early for that. Okay, let's go home. Feels the wind as we're going I like spending these moments